puede hacer mucho más. No, no más lávase. ¿Me permite sus documentos? ¿Son parientes? Ok, but four seconds, start wrapping it up. Is that a monster? <laughs> One Square Mile, Texas is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, flying the Texas skies since 1971 and community partners in square miles from coast to coast. Southwest Airlines is proud to support One Square Mile, Texas. More information at southwest.com. Texas Photo Montage, featuring the cultural images of Texas. Available online at texasmontage.com. Texas is an interesting place, and uh, I think I identify most with Dallas. I don't think I found my tribe until I got here. We're seven miles from the border, so you get a little bit of everything. You'd be surprised what goes on in a little town. When you enact, they all make sure that you're okay and safe. If you go to a restaurant, plan on a two-hour wait. I'm living in a city where things are vibrant. When I'm here, I just feel like I'm in the right spot. We're in a cultural explosion, influenced by this community. My name is Father Ron Gonzalez. I'm a Jesuit priest, and I'm the pastor and the superior of this, uh, this parish. A veces en nuestra vida, nuestra camino, peregrinación, hay un tiempo, a lo mínimo, una vez. El Paso is definitely a Catholic city, and the fact that we're next to Juarez, Mexico, it's also a Catholic city. So Catholicism has been an important part of the people's lives here. If you walk around over here, it feels like Mexico. The culture, the people, the way they dress, the stores, everything that you hear is in Spanish. The music is in Spanish, people discussing are in Spanish. And so because we're right on the border, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, an older area. This church is probably one of the poorest churches in the city. It serves uh, mainly a migrant population. It's all Spanish, so our main and only language here is Spanish. Most of these are laborers, these are workers, these are people who uh, work hard every day, and yet it's their faith, their faith life, that is the, of primary importance and their love of the church. They may be poor economically, but they're certainly rich spiritually, and it's, it's an important part of their family lives. Now, it's true that it's it's sort of uh, decreasing a little bit, and so a lot of the structures that we had, the nuns, the religious, the priests, they're not there anymore. But we still have the, the older folks, the abuelitos, and so uh, a lot of the faith is transmitted through our grandparents. Many faithful people have sat in these pews. Many people that still sit in these pews that, that touch my life, very loving, very faithful. In fact, I would say that uh, I think they, they, they feed me spiritually more than probably I can feed them. I was adopted. I was uh, actually born in California. I was adopted when I was about two years old. I was aware that I, I had uh, a birth mother someplace over there, probably in California. Think of a puzzle. There was a piece missing in the first part of the puzzle. And uh, about a year ago, I made contact. It all happened with the picture and Facebook. They were very poor, and of course that was one of the reasons why uh, we were put up for adoption, to give us a, a better life, a better opportunity. And so it's ironic, I guess, that I find myself here on the border because I am working with people who are seeking a better life, a better opportunity. And to think that somehow 
I didn't come from that would be a lie. I did come from this, but in a different way. And so to share that, that connection with others here, it's a deep impact. And at the end of the day, I guess we have to figure out, well, what is life? What does it mean? Being here it kind of balances it off a little bit. It helps me to realize the things that are important, faith, family, and friends. Para que el Señor los llene de su gracia, oremos. The port of entry with all four locations that we have process anywhere from 18 to 22,000 pedestrians. Of those, 12,000 of them come through here, so it's really, really busy. You know, a lot of them are, are a way to make a living. They have permits to work and, and or attend school. They're looking for opportunities that they can't find at home. And many of them, uh, half of the family has immigrated into the U.S. and the other half has remained in Mexico. You know, I'm a, a perfect example of that. El Chavalón del Pelo Chino. I was born in Ciudad Juarez, in, in Mexico. My father immigrated into the U.S. in 1969. I was six years old. Here, my only language was Spanish, as it's for my parents. But the language barrier was, it was, it was more embarrassing to me than anything else. I remember a teacher telling my mom, have your boy watch Sesame Street. And that's where I learned, just watching Sesame Street. When we moved over here, you know, we were very poor, and, uh, but, but it was great. You didn't know that, I guess, we were poor. I had no idea. And, you know, it's all part of who, who I am, what, what I'm about, and, and, and how we don't take, shouldn't be taking things for granted. Sí, so, pero sería 125 por cada uno. My mom, my dad, in the glove compartment, always had a salt shaker. They'd buy the tortillas, we'd come across, we're waiting in line, and I'd be eating the salt the taquito. Okay, gracias, tenga un buen día. Believe it or not, when I come to these bridges, going up the line, checking these vehicles, and I'll see kids in the back seat eating those same rolled salt taquitos. You know, as maybe one of these days, that child will be here taking over the job that I'm doing now. La Nina Express. Y pues con eso empieza el proceso. You know, it's a way to connect. It's an opportunity, it's an opening, it's a gateway to both countries. You know, I, I live in this community in El Paso. It's, it's important to me to do this job because not only am I keeping my community safe, but my family. You know, El Paso has come out as the safest city in the U.S. year after year. And a big part of it is, is us as officers doing our job here at the front line. When people ask me for where I'm from, I always say I'm from Texas, El Paso. And they asked me, well, what do you mean is, you know, El Paso is in Texas. I don't know, Texas is in El Paso. My name is Sarah Escandon. I'm an eighth grade science teacher. I also do the robotics program here at Guillen Middle School. Guys, these are extra pieces, okay? They build a robot. They actually learn how to make a research paper to college level. They have to be knowledgeable and present this to a set of judges in a competition that involves more than 100 teams. Did you get the right size? For the past six years, every year we, we get either first place or second place. They get very competitive. For me, them, just the end product and what the knowledge that they obtain, that for me is more important than them getting a trophy. Make sure you save it because we're running out of time. You don't want to lose any data. They have obtained so much knowledge and it's going to help them not only in high school, but it's going to help them in anything that they do. Movements, But there are robots that we use, you know, in the real world for different purposes. My expectations are pretty high. 
I always tell them that anything's possible and they can learn as much as they can. In the future, I'll see you, I'll be an old lady, and then I'll see you, you're a famous engineer that you built something awesome. We have students that have never gone to the east side of El Paso. We have students that have never gone to the west side. And so sometimes that's my job when we take them to competitions, just taking them out and telling them, look guys, there's more than, than downtown El Paso. Go and see what's out there and, and see how their lives are different than ours. Are you ready? Put your thinking hats on. The school is located right next to um, the border of Juarez and El Paso. You can see cars driving by. It's just right next to um, Juarez. So that's why we get a lot of students from Juarez. And that's what we're doing. They have to test things over and over because that's what scientists do. They're very humble students. They're very thankful for everything that we do. Everything that happens in the classroom, they appreciate the learning that happens in there. We chose a target group of girls that we think might need help in different areas. They need a role model. They need also like a little push to where they learn that women can do a lot of things with their lives. We teach them about education and the fields that women are actually working on. And then you're gonna push it up. It's culture. It's also sometimes that their parents never had opportunities. We expose them to different activities and encourage them to go to college. I was born here in El Paso and back in 1981. We moved to Juarez, like five minutes from here. And I was raised there till the age of 13 and moved back to El Paso and started seventh grade. That's one of the reasons why I um, applied for this position because I was one of those students. I um, started learning English at the age of 13. The end result is for me, I gotta keep doing this and I have to keep helping my students become something in life. All my life I've been working as a janitor. I'm a custodian at Guillen Middle School. I've been working there for almost 12 years. For me, it's like working and living in the same place. I already know the people, I already know the kids and it's something that helps me a lot. Segundo Barrio, it's uh, one of the oldest communities here in El Paso. It's the third poorest zip code in the United States. I know people that have been living here and they're from third generation families, fourth generation families that have been lived here forever. Segundo Barrio has a long history of being a, a violent community, especially on the gang issue side. Hey. It's changed through the years. We, we have seen a lot of progress in this community. Oh, wow. come out pretty nice. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty nice. My role right now as the president of the Southside Neighborhood Association is we want that our, our residents, our, our kids, to know the history of their community, to promote our culture, and to have a, a safe community. We need to know where we come from, and it's part of, a, of growing up in the community, is knowing what past is the, the community has. We promote our events by taking flyers to our residents, posting flyers on the corners, on grocery stores. I'm gonna take Misty. Okay. I love my community, I love my family, I love my work. I'm a lucky person. El Paso likes murals a lot and, and they're everywhere. I guess that's one of the things that make us different, the cultural thing, that's what stands up. Yeah, and I, I don't know about this, but I know... Jesus uh, Alvarado, he's a young muralist. I know him since high school. I want to create an educational document so that we don't forget our culture. I, I am proud to be from this community, and I think that growing up here had a, an influence in my life. I want to teach the younger kids, you know, this is how we grew up. 
a lot of us grew up taking baths in bathtubs because the tenements that we grew up in they didn't have a shower. That's when I kind of like want a community not to forget and and to keep together. You know, you see the, the the people go by those murals and be like, oh, I remember when you know so and so did this. I remember this, and that's what gives me satisfaction of doing those pieces. Growing up in the barrio and seeing all these artists, you know, at the time in the 80s, 90s, you know, producing all these murals, that becomes a culture. And I think right now we're in a great cultural explosion. We still have some of the problems that we had when I was growing up. You know, it's not as bad like with the gang violence, it's not as bad with the drugs, but they're still here. You know, they're not right on your face, but they're still here. And we still need to work with these kids and we need to work with the community to make it better. We have a, so much history here that helped define the rest of the city. From our mothers, our tias going out to the rest of the city to clean their houses, you know, to the laborers going out to build the other houses to go pick the crops. So we, uh, in a way, as a community, created El Paso. One of the reasons that I do what I, what I do with those murals is to make sure that this community feels proud of the community that we are. I'm just an artist right now trying to do something good for the community. I mean, I don't know where it's going to take me. Hopefully it will take me somewhere good and it will, it will help me help the community. Many people believe that farm workers are Mexicans that just came yesterday swimming through the Rio Grande River. The Mexicans and other immigrants have been doing farm labor for years. I'm the director of the Farm Workers Center. My job is to make sure that the center is working on behalf of the workers. Farm workers are an invisible kind of force, when we are sleeping, they are traveling to the fields. When we are working, they are in the fields. So we hardly see farm workers. The purpose of the center is to support the farm workers of the area, of the border region, that they find a place where they can relax, where they can rest, where they can take care of their personal needs. The center is very important here because El Segundo Barrio has been a working class kind of neighborhood. It's been a place, a gathering place for farm workers, a recruitment site for workers. Here we have the Cebolleros, the migrant workers from South Texas who start working in the Rio Grande Valley following the onion crop. They go every morning, they go to the fields, very early morning at three o'clock in the morning. And they will stop working at three, four p.m. And they will go back to El Paso. The farm workers arrive here. They take a shower. They have something to eat. They participate in activities. We have, for example, GED classes for all workers and their families. And then at nine o'clock, they will turn off the lights and they will try to sleep for a few hours before going back to the fields. You hardly hear any words of compassion here at the Farm Workers Center because uh, we know that the, what they do is very important and farm workers should be proud of what they do. I am Elizabeth Arroyo in El Paso, Texas, in the Segundo Barrio. I'm 26 years old. Nina, are you hungry? It's very hard just to be a mother in school, and it's very hard to work and go to school, but I'm doing all three because I have a lot of responsibilities. I'm a senior at the University of Texas, and I'm studying to be a biologist. 
I don't know, sometimes I question my intelligence, you know? I'm with these PhDs and, you know, like, am I really smart enough? But I think I am. I am a cake maker slash baker at the Bui Bakery. I enjoy making cakes because it's not the same every day. I like it when people order challenging cakes because I've been making cakes for so long I could probably do it like blindfolded or something. I guess like in a way it's kind of like my alone time even though I'm working. I'm just by myself and I'm in the zone and I could think about whatever. It's very hard. I think I was very selfish before I had my daughter. I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do something with my life. I'm not going to just sit down and not do anything. It's exhausting, but you can't wait to see her. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, but it's the most rewarding. I have another person to take care of, and I have to make sure I make my hours to make my rent. Right now, I don't have a lot of time for her. I hope afterwards we get to go places, you know? Right now, I'm just surviving. I'm just going through the motions, you know? I feel like as soon as I graduate, that's when my life is really going to start. I wish I would have done it sooner. It's very, very important to make a better life for myself and my daughter. So I hope she looks at me and she thinks, wow, you know what? She struggled and she got her way through college. And I hope she graduates and she does something that she really likes. I grew up here. I love this area. I love everything about it here. When I was uh, about six or so, my dad used to put a, a little box up against the work table. He would show me how to make uh, the different pastries. My dad would bake them and they would put them out in the storefront. Wherever I go, people find out that I own the bakery. They get a smile on their face and they always tell me stories about how their, their grandma used to bring them to the bakery when they were little. We got a lot of people that, that used to live here and moved out, moved uh, to other parts of the city or moved away. One of the most common pastries and the customer's favorites is uh, gingerbread piggies. They call them maranitos in Spanish. We have some American pastries, donuts, uh, fruit tarts, mostly Mexican pastries though. We open at six o'clock, so we get about three, four, or five people coming in as soon as we open. We get pretty busy in the morning. We got a lot of people, you know, going to work, kids going to school. And it's like that all day long. I suffered a stroke, a hemorrhagic stroke, and uh, I struggle with my paralysis. And it's not easy running or trying to run a business. And it's just, it's a struggle. It can get pretty hard, it can get uh, frustrating, but we realize how, how lucky we are to have what we have. I think life is good for me. I, I, I don't think I need to ask for anything else. I'm gonna have my own business. I love coming to work every day. I don't think I would want to do anything else. I have to make sure that we're doing things and, and making things the way my father used to do. I mean, it's very important to me. It gives me pride to know that uh, what my parents started here has uh, grown into something that people love. To find out more about this one square mile and others, visit our website at osmtx.com.
One Square Mile, Texas is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, flying the Texas skies since 1971, and community partners in square miles from coast to coast. Southwest Airlines is proud to support One Square Mile, Texas. More information at southwest.com. Texas Photo Montage, featuring the cultural images of Texas. Available online at texasmontage.com.